In the last tutorial, we created a man, an animation using the frame-based animation technique in Photoshop. Now, we can actually convert this frame-based thing into a video-based timeline. And so I have just done so. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is the best way to animate. I'm just saying that it's possible. Now, you'll see, if I come in here, I actually have a new video timeline but I pretty much have the same exact animation. Now to find out what's going on within these things, I can go ahead and try and just see what's what's here. Let's see, opacity. So I think at this point what's happening is that's saying the opacity starts at, at zero and then at six seconds it appears as um, opaque. Now the way I have to check that is I have to actually go to that layer, have it selected, and then you'll see the numbers change. I just went before that box and that box is not a true quote-unquote keyframe it's kind of like a, a hold interpolation keyframe and that's really yucky. Now we can do a linear one if I do a linear interpolation now you'll actually see that it can have that particular logo fade in. It's just not happening at the right time. I want it to happen much later. So, I'll just move that timeline over. Now I can move this to when I want it. And I might need to go now to the end of the animation and scale this back if I want it to end at the same time. But now you see, with the video timeline, I feel like I have a lot more control about how I want things to animate and when I want them to come in. Plus, instead of it just being frame numbers, I'm now dealing with seconds which is a lot different. Now this border obviously is going to change, is not going to change. I really don't know why I have all those. I would like it to stay the same opacity throughout. And that opacity should be set to 100%. So I really don't know why that stuff was there. All right, now here is the logo. And the logo that I created, or I'm sorry, the button, the button that I created here, you'll see comes in later. Um, but you'll notice that um, it comes in as a folder and then each of the three layers is there. Now one of the things to be aware of with using this, oh look at that, oh good. It looks like I don't have to go to each individual layer, it looks like I can control just that one thing and that's awesome. Because what a pain it, it is really in order to have to go to each individual layer and animate them when you have them inside of a group. But it looks like we can actually fix that. And I'm going to change that to linear, change that to linear, and let's see what happens. Yeah, we can totally have that come in, and now we can make it just slightly after. Let's look at these other ones here. We've got the kitten, and you'll see, oh, it has all these different key hold keyframes for the different version of opacity and what I really want to do is change these to linear just in case I want to be able to control that speed and maybe have it happen a little bit faster because what I want to happen here is I want the kitten to fade out and then I can go ahead and stop that layer because after he's faded out I don't really need to see that layer on here anymore now I've got the cat medium. So I'm going to have the cat medium come in later. So I'm going to actually delete some of those. Maybe bring that back. Linear interpretation. Right click. Linear interpretation. So it should start, I believe, at zero. And it go to 100%. So it looks like I'm going to have to change that layer. So let's see. The cat medium. Take it up to 100%. Ah, and now that's right. He's going to have to fade out. So I'll have to take them back to a zero. I really should have three keyframes. So he's going to come up. Oh, and you might see, you know what? Maybe he should stay around for a little bit. So he should come from zero to 100%, and then 100% back to zero a little bit later. Then I'll have the large cat do the same sort of thing. Now, I've never tried it, but I'm going to try one thing that would be kind of cool. If I wanted to copy and paste the transform or opacity from one place to another, let's see if I can copy that, go to that frame, and paste. Darn! 
doesn't work. Works in all the other Adobe applications that do animation. So I thought I'd at least try it. It's possible. Whoops, looks like I'm I'm doing two keyframes at once when I have more than one layer selected. So that's that's kind of cool. If you select more than one layer and you change any one property, you can change it on all those layers that are selected. By the way, I've never used these tools before. I'm just kind of playing around for the first time. But I found that they're really not too bad. I have a lot of experience in animation um, using After Effects and Flash. And so you find that the tools here are not so bad. One of the things, though, that I'm definitely focusing on, and one of the things that I like about using this method in Photoshop, is that I can get an idea about how the layers stagger and when they appear and when they don't appear by the fact that I can I can stop them when I want them. So on this one, it stops after that particular point. So I'll go ahead and just remove it right there. Now it might be nice also to maybe start to look at maybe animating some things in. So maybe I want the food here to happen so that it it uh, slides off to the left while the other stuff slides in from the right. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and keep that opacity up, but I'm going to do a transform at this point, and I'm going to move it over to the um, side. So it looks like that. I need to move back. I need to move back so these don't interfere with it too much. So the pet food needs to slide over. So let's make sure I know what I'm clicking on. Your pet needs food, so I'll slide that over. And then also I need to slide over the bet, the bowl of food. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Let's make sure that I pull that back in. Hmm, where is the pat that text? I think that I, yes, that was my whole problem all along. I never created keyframes for it. Well, that will make an issue. So let's see, your pet, I need the pet to move off at the same time as that. So I need transform. And I need transform. And then I need that to move off to the side. There we go. In fact, it would be nice that these don't move exactly at the same time. It's always more interesting when you stagger them just a little bit. Now, I'll take that pet food that I have here and slide it into the place. So let's go ahead and make it so that it's 100% visible. We know it's going to end about there. And so I'm going to do a transform. I'm going to go forward just a little bit and make another keyframe and then come back and then slide it back a little bit and then I'm going to make my opacity keyframes as well and then for the beginning one I'm going to take it out so here's what I have now and that's a lot more interesting transition the last thing that I have to do is have these messages come in at the right time so that comes in last. Purina knows this too. Comes in before. So it's going to be opacity and then opacity and that should come up to 100%. Purina knows this too. Find out how. Now what I need to do is make sure that I truncate all the rest of these at um, the ends of these things so it lasts until I want. So if I have it just going to 12 seconds, then I'm going to go ahead and take the end of these all the way back. And now I'm, I'm kind of snapping, by the way. Um, doesn't look like I have to hold down the Shift key but it automatically snaps to that line, which is really nice. So here's our animation at this point. If I want to play it, just hit the space bar, I believe.
and you'll see we have a little bit more compelling animation than we had with the frame by frame animation. I know it's not the easiest to do this and there's a lot of playing around that I've been doing um, but hopefully you've gotten an idea of what the video timeline can do in Photoshop. Now the last thing that we need to do is save out this file so I'm gonna save my Photoshop file as step 5 here and then I'm ready to export my animated GIF. We're going to do basically the same thing that we did before. You'll notice that it takes a little bit longer and it is a much, much larger GIF file so or GIF file. Um, so this is something you have to be aware of. When you start doing animated timelines and you have a lot of animation and stuff happening, you get much larger file sizes. But this has become popular nowadays, um, so I'm allowing it at least for the for the meantime. So let's take a look. Here's my original ad, which is an animated GIF. And then here is the same thing as a video. And that looks pretty darn cool. So I, I hope you enjoyed these tutorials on doing animated GIFs. Of course, there would be a lot of other things that you really need to look into, like doing the cinemagraph um, idea that's common. Now, one of the things that I just want to point out is, as you get into like cinemagraph type effects, um, you might want to do something like have the large cat blink his eyes or something like that in the middle of this animation. Well, what you want to make sure of is that you're not repeating all a whole bunch of graphics, meaning that all you really need is a small graphic of his eyes closing that is cropped to that exact area and just show that little bit and it's basically superimposed on top of the original graphic. Um, and that's a much more effective way and it creates smaller file sizes than if you were to say have a number like 20 different images of this cat blinking his eyes and you had the whole cat in there for each image. That would not be a good idea. You only change the parts of the file that actually need the changing. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave some feedback in YouTube to let me know what you think or if you had any questions and uh, thanks.